Hey guys, Antonio here with another video on Crucial Conversations. And today we're gonna to be talking about learn to look, how to know when safety is at risk. And before we get started guys, click that subscribe button down below. Follow along with more videos like this and straight to your inbox every single week guys. So, this whole chapter is about needing to pay attention to warning signs in conversations. Right, we're talking about crucial conversations, things that are high risk. And in order for you to detect when something becomes crucial, you need to see when it's gonna become crucial. And so there's a couple of things that you can use to detect it. First, are physical signs. So when your stomach tightens up and your eyes become dry. These things are signs that you're starting to get a little nervous, you're starting to get a little scared. Things are not necessarily um, safe. Even though they may not be, you may be physically safe, right? No one's gonna hurt each other. Feelings may be hurt. So that's why you're feeling physical signs as well. Next is emotional feelings, right? This is something you may feel the most out of anything. You're scared, you're hurt, or you're angry. All these feelings are things that, this is not a normal conversation, right? We're not conversing back and forth freely. People are saying things and they're hurting other people or they're scared to say something. Next is the behavioral things that you may notice is first is raising your voice or pointing fingers or becoming quiet, not talking much, right? These are things that you'll see that someone else is doing or maybe you'll notice that you're doing and may depict that something else is coming along with it, that the conversation is not just right. So there's two bigger things you need to pay attention to that we have to think about when we're talking about conversations, right? There's this uh, pool of meaning that we all need to contribute to. Everyone that's in the crucial conversation must contribute to in order to solve the problem at hand. And these, there's two things I'm about to talk about. Silence and violence are things that hurt the pool of meaning from getting everything they need. First is silence, and that is when we withhold meaning from the pool, because we're not talking about it. Let me show you an example of that right now. So, I was thinking that we go to McDonald's for Valentine's Day. How do you feel about that? For Valentine's Day? Yeah, I've, like, I've really wanted those McNuggets. I've been dying to get a 20 for five. I mean, yeah, yeah, if you wanna go. Sweet, let's go! So, we have, clearly, the silence is used in order for you to avoid problems, right? You're afraid of speaking your true mind, so you're gonna avoid the problem of it even existing by not saying anything. You'd rather keep it inside than do anything else. But that's a problem because it doesn't get us to that pool of meaning where everyone understands and everyone wins from the conversation. That doesn't happen. What happens is, is that one person gets hurt and one person ends up winning because one person thinks that the other person's okay. Now there's three ways that this has happened. First is masking. Masking is understanding or selectively showing our true opinions. Sarcasm, sugarcoating, and coughing are some of the more popular forms. You make it seem like this is truly how I feel. That's what masking is. You're really hiding what your true feelings are. That's a form of silence because you're still not keeping things in the pool. Next is avoiding. Avoiding is, you know, steering completely away from the sensitive information. Just not even going down that path because you know it'll make the other person angry. Right, rather than finding a better way to do it, you just completely avoid the scenario. And next is withdrawing. Withdrawing is when you pull out of the conversation altogether. You're not talking, you're not there, you won't respond to someone's text messages, phone calls, whatever, the other person that you're conversing with here, that's withdrawing completely, not giving anything to the pool. So, now that you know what silence is like, let's talk a little bit about violence. Violence is the exact opposite. It's like forcing meaning into the pool of what you want and your point of view. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So. I was hoping for Valentine's Day that we can go to McDonald's because there's this like 20 for 5 McNugget special that I've been craving. Are you f kidding me? Are you f are you f kidding me right now? You want to take me to f 
McDonald's? You want to take me to McDonald's? Is that what yeah. you're saying? You want to take me to McDonald's? Yeah, that's, that's what I After just said. After five years that we've been together, you're going to take me to McDonald's. Are you kidding me? What? You are going to go <laughs> take me to a restaurant. You're taking me to my favorite Italian restaurant, and you're going to go get ready right now. Alright, sure, I guess. The point of violence is to attempt to convince the other person to get them to see your point of view. And that's not always going to work, right? You can't just try to talk someone into seeing your point of view, right? They may have beliefs and you're not taking them into consideration. When you force them down someone's throat, nothing good comes out of it. You can't force someone. So there's three different ways that this is happening. And the first is controlling. Controlling is when you're trying to convert other people to your way of thinking by forcing views or demanding conversation. Sorry, dominating conversation. It involves cutting other people off, like not letting them talk, overstating your facts, saying them over and over and over and over again, speaking in absolutes like this is black, this is white, changing the subject to whatever you want it to be, or using directive questions to control the conversation. These are all things that depict controlling, right? Someone that likes to have control will change things the way they want it to be. Anytime that happens, that's when someone's being controlling. Now the next form would be labeling. Labeling is putting a label on people or ideas, saying you're a liberal, you're a conservative, and associate them with all of the things that come along with that. This way you can assume a this thing about someone because they're part of that category and that doesn't help anything right because no one is the same no one likes everything likes the same thing that someone else does of the same group right they might have slightly different um, beliefs or slightly different preferences right so labeling is just not okay um, that's a way of forcing meaning into the pool and then the last is attacking and attacking is when um, you're not trying to win the argument anymore. You're just trying to make the other person suffer. When you're trying to find ways to hurt the other person, that's attacking. And as you can probably see, that's not okay as well. So we want to avoid silence and violence. And by detecting these things through physical, emotional, and behavioral uh, signs, you may notice when someone goes silent and when they're violent. That is when a conversation becomes crucial. So this is important for you to determine when conversations turn crucial. Now the next step is obviously to how do I take that conversation from being crucial and work towards a solution. Stay tuned for those videos guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a thumbs up. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below for you to purchase a copy of this book on Amazon. Guys, make sure to check me out on Patreon. I'd much appreciate any donation you can give. Um, you also get some special benefits for becoming a Patreon, so check that out. Also, guys, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can connect with me there. I'll respond to your posts. Um, and I also post daily on all of those formats. Also, guys, remember that a chapter a day allows for success to make way. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.